Hi, my name is Tim. Join me in this video as I show you the new way that the FAA is linking remote ID information with your drone registration. This is for recreational flyers. Let's get to it. This video is being filmed in June of 2023. I recently updated my um, recreational um, registration with the FAA for recreational use of drones, RC model airplanes. It was a normal process, three-year renewal registration, uh, $5 for the three years renewal, again, recreational pilot. But what was interesting is part of that renewal is I saw for the first time where the FAA is linking on their website the remote ID information along with the model aircraft you, you, you fly. Remember, the FAA doesn't distinguish between drones and RC model airplanes. They're all unmanned small aircraft. But this was the first time I saw how the remote ID information is being linked to your aircraft uh, via your registration. So a quick review of what's going on here. First of all, I recently did a YouTube video on um, remote ID and regulations. It was a quite popular video. It generated a lot of quite interesting comments. <clears throat> I'm not going to comment on all those. You can read through the comments uh, if you want on that video. There'll be a link in the description. There are some modelers out there that think the FAA is not authorized to write regulations. I can't help you on that. They can write regulations, and this is the brave new world of remote ID and how we're going to go into that. Please look at me as a messenger on here. I'm like Walter Cronkite re reporting the news. I am just informing you of what's going on. I'm not telling you what you have to do, or what you don't have to do, but this is the current state of play with the FAA, recreational RC model airplane or drone flyers and remote ID. As a reminder, if you'd like to see where we are in the video, just hover over the timeline. The chapters are listed for the various sections. Also, I greatly appreciate any likes and subscribes you have. It truly helps the channel with a YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Let's do a quick review of Remote ID. Um, here is a view of the Title 14 um, authorization for Remote ID back in April of 2021. So Remote ID is a finalized rule from regulation from the FAA. And there's a couple background dates. Again, this is being filmed in June of 2023. Nobody has to do anything with remote ID until its implementation date, which is September 16th, 2023. So I repeat, nobody has to do anything with remote ID until the compliance date of September 16th, 2023. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. Remote ID is a way for the FAA to track certain flight parameters of your RC model airplane, a drone, altitude, speed, and the one that's causing a lot of angst with people, it will <clears throat> mark as best it can the takeoff location of the drone. So they, if, if law enforcement wants to find that drone pilot, they know where the drone took off and landed. There are three ways to be compliant with a remote ID ruling. The first one is to buy a drone with remote ID installed. This is called the standard remote ID. The second way is to get a remote ID module. It's a module that you plug into your home-built RC model airplane or drone that doesn't come with it in the factory, and you're compliant with a remote ID. The third way is what is called a FRIA, or FAA-recognized identification area. This is an airspace um, designated by the FAA, where it's typically at your local club field, field or an educational um, institution. You can fly all you want without remote ID if you're in the airspace boundaries of the FRIAs. Again, recreational pilots only. So some comments on where we are with this. Well, the drone manufacturers, again, they, they needed to be compliant back in December of 2022. By and large, there's about 105 uh, drone uh, models and serial numbers that are, that are legal per the FAA. So by and large, the drone manufacturers are in compliance with remote ID for the September 16th implementation rule. So after that, anybody who buys a drone will be remote ID compliant. This is fairly important because if you, except for discussion purposes, the average life of a drone is about three years. Over a three year period, as modelers buy new drones, they'll be remote ID compliant. So a large segment 
of the um, RC model airplane community will be compliant over three years as they buy their new drones. The remote ID modules are a whole other discussion. There are about four or five compliant modules. They're expensive, over $200. In my view, that's a non-starter non for the average model, and they've got to come much, much lower in price. That hasn't happened yet. I wish in a perfect world that there was some sort of module that was affordable to the average modeler. We'll have to wait and see what happens at that time. The people who need the modules are, for example, I'm gonna be um, demonstrating my, my Pronto, it's a plans-built aircraft, um, will need the module. I can fly in a Freya, but I fly, if I'm flying outside of a Freya, I'm gonna need some sort of remote ID module, which doesn't really exist yet. And finally, Freyas. I think are going to be very useful if you are a member of the AMA or the appropriate educational institution, you're flying at the free location. Uh, the FAA works through community-based organizations. I'll talk about that a little bit later. You put an application through your community-based organization, the AMA will be a huge part of this. The FAA look at the application and approve it. Right now, there are no free as approved because as part of the approval process, there has to be some environmental regulations complied with, complied with if it has an impact on the environment. That 60-day review period will be over on the first part of July, so I would expect the second week of July or so, we'll start seeing the initial free as being approved. Uh, that'll be through the AMA. We'll wait to see how that works out. Another very important thing before, as we get into the remote ID um, and the registration process, Again, this is recreational flyers only. If your model weighs less than 250 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces, you do not need to register your model. Again, if the model is less than 250 grams, you don't have to register it. The idea being these models are so small, they're not going to cause any harm to aircraft or, or other people flying up there. So for example, this little pits that I have, the UMX pits, um, very nice little airplane for me flight four ounces with a battery. I don't need to register this or have remote ID for um, this aircraft when I'm flying it anywhere. Um, however, for the Pronto, which weighs more than 8.8 .8 ounces, I do have to register that and have the remote ID. Remember, for recreational flyers, you get one registration that you use on all your aircraft. If you have 50 models, models as an, a recreational flyer, there's one registration number and re one remote ID module that can be swapped out between the various aircraft, recreational flyers only. So what started this whole video and this discussion of linking remote ID uh, with your registration? Well, I got this email the other day from the FAA, and it's a, um, it's, a, it's a very good email. It says, my registration will expire within 180 days. They're good for three years, and um, I can renew at any time within this 180 days. It's $5, five for the three-year renewal, and um, it'll, it'll, go, it'll extend from the um, original expiration date, so I don't lose any time by doing it um, sooner. So what I want to do is show you what I did by clicking on a link on here. The key website is FAA Drone Operator. You'll see the FAA Drone Zone is, is the portion of the FAA website. But it'll take you right to dashboards, logins, and you can see how I renewed my registration, which is totally routine. But then there's a new thing where you add devices. Devices is, I guess, the FAA term for your RC model airplanes to your our remote ID information, and we'll, we'll walk through this. This is the first time for me. Again, I'm just the messenger here. We'll demonstrate what the FAA is looking for versus manufactured drones, home-built drones, et cetera. And so let's take a look at that now. This is the email I got from the FAA, just a normal good email. My registration uh, needs to be renewed in 180 days, a website to do that. My registration number, again, for recreational flyer, one registration number for all the models that I fly. So we click on that, and it takes us to the FAA Drone Zone portion of the FAA website. And this is our account. And so what we do is we log in with our email address and our password, agree, and we go to the FAA Drone Zone Services site, and you will see there is a launch drone information here. So we click on that 
and it takes us to this page. Now, I have a Part 107 license in addition to my recreational, so you may or may not get this if you're just a recreational flyer. Ton of stuff you have to know for Part 107. This video is for recreational flyers only. You can see the recreational flyer tab up there. So we'll click on that to bring us to the recreational flyer page. So this is mine, recreational flyers. You can see the dashboard. Uh, two devices in the circle, how to mark your drone, the safety guidance. It's really not too much for recreational flyers. The flyer uh, airspace authorization if you're going into controlled airspace. So what we're going to do is add a device for an airplane. This is the Pronto that I built. Uh, link is in the description. And we're going to add that to my inventory. So this is the inventory for a recreational flyer. We just click, um, click to add a device. I just started this. You'll see two aircraft already in there. So what we'll do is we will click on the Add Device section. And this brings up uh, adding an airplane. And the first question is, does your drone have a remote I broadcast remote ID information? So yes, no. So if we do yes, what will happen is we have to select what type of remote ID, either standard that comes from the factory or the remote ID module, and you put in all the information. Now, the Pronto does not have remote ID. I'm going to fly it in a FRIA, the FAA recognized identification area. So we're going to go up to does it have remote broadcast remote ID? This is no. So now this is where I, you're kind of trying to figure this out. The device type is a home built or traditional UAS. I guess either you built it at home or you bought it. They want the manufacturer. Now, I guess I'm the manufacturer, so I just typed in my name here uh, for this Pronto aircraft. A nickname, because you'll have a list of models. I just call it Tim's Pronto, for lack of a better term. And the model, I just put the designer, Dave Roblin. It's a 1972 design of this um, Pronto. I just bought the plans for Model Airplane News. Now, you'll notice there's a serial number here, but we, we don't broadcast remote ID information. So what we click is serial number not applicable. And then once we do that, we click Add Device. And here is the third device added to our inventory list. There are things you could do to um, cancel it and so forth. I don't think there's any way to delete it because the bottom one, when I was just playing with it, you could cancel it. Uh, but that's your list. And we go back to the dashboard. We can see three devices are added. Now, one thing I want to point out while we're on the subject is community-based organizations. Community-based organizations are important because that allows a carve-out for recreational flyers from all the very difficult Part 107 rules. It's just the way the FAA has negotiated this drone rulings with the uh, Congress. So the community-based organizations are necessary to get FAA-recognized identification areas. So far, there are four FAA-recognized uh, community-based organizations. You can see them here. So that's what the FAA is doing right now. I agree it's a very cumbersome problem. If you didn't like FAA regulations before, you're probably not going to be a greater fan of them now, but that, that's where we are for the remote ID and, and the vehicles. The question always comes up, well, what if there's not remote ID modules by the September 16th date? What if um, FRIAs are not approved? My personal belief is the FAA will slip that September 16th date, and the way they slip it, it'll just be an announcement that we're not going to do any enforcement actions on it until such and such a date. They actually did that with the drone manufacturers. The manufacturers originally were supposed to be compliant by September 16th, 2022. The FAA slipped that to December 16th. That We won't know that until the last moment. That's just the way these um, large government organizations work. So for right now, June 2023, there's nothing to worry about. We fly ops normal, as you already have. As you get closer to that September 16th date, we'll see what happens with remote ID modules. Frias, if you're near a um, if, Frias, if you're near a um, AMA club site or educational institution, and any delay on that in implementation date, and uh, the AMA is pretty good about keeping uh, track of that. So thank you for watching, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.